Hi again, here's Marcus from uh, Montag Steins and Clarks in San Goa in lovely Germany in the Middle Iron area. And today I would like to give you a little buying guide on a cuckoo clock, uh, things to watch out for, and also some tips and hacks uh, which you need to know when you like to pick the right clock for you. So come a little closer, I give you little details. Uh, so first of all, um, why should you get a cuckoo clock? Well, it's a big German traditional. Uh, cuckoo clocks are all made in the Black Forest, which is a lovely hiking area and also hunting area. So in the Black Forest clocks, you will see a lot of the lifestyle from the Black Forest people. So it's a traditional. Um, they also all work with mechanism. So they have a very special uh, mechanism inside, which is a German engineering, which lasts for hundreds of years already. We have one company left uh, also in the Black Forest, which still produces them, and a mechanism clock almost lasts forever. Yeah, and that's also questions a lot of people have. How long does a cuckoo clock last? Well, if you need, if you treat them nice and follow the instructions, almost forever it's actually very bad for business because it's something that doesn't break but it's very good for you and lasts much more than pretty much anything else we buy nowadays so how uh, a cuckoo clock makes the sound well the cuckoo clock actually makes the sound with two pipe bellows uh, here we have a model and very big so one makes coo and the other cook and even up to now there's no better way to produce that sound um, with the pipe bellows because it's all mechanism. In the early days when it was invented, it actually was out of bones and leather at the beginning. Uh, let's switch over here. Here we have a transparent cuckoo clock where you actually can see the mechanism works. Yeah, I just will start it once for you. So here we have the mechanism inside. On the side here you see the music walls. This here is a lever where you can turn on the clock and off. Yeah. Um, here you have the two pipe bellows, then the dancers which are going around together with the music and of course the cuckoo bird. You see now with the music playing, the weights here also moving down. So this is the whole thing how the cuckoo clock works. And then you only have two fingers is enough, wind up the cuckoo clock at least once a day. So here we come already to the next difference, or to a basic, which is very important. The main basic is we have two different types of clocks. We have a one-day cuckoo clock and we have an eight-day cuckoo clock. A one-day cuckoo clock has this nice small weights. You know? The small weights here are the one-day clocks and the big weights are the eight-day clocks. So you see the difference, small weights, big weights, one-day, eight-day. Let's stay here on this clock. Um, every weight also has a function. So one weight is always for the time when the pendulum is ticking. This also means that the clock is turned on. The second one is always for the cuckoo bird. Yeah? When the bird comes out. And the third one is always for the music. So when you're looking for a clock and you know that you like to have one with music, you only have to look out for three weights. Everything which has two weights, you will have no music. So this is already a big way how you can sort a clock out what you like. Do you like to wind it once a day or would you like to wind it once a week? That's the first big question. And the second big question is, would you like to have one with music or without music? Because as you learned already, it's a mechanism clock. So it's similar to a, clock, uh, to a car. It's either turned off and it's not working or it's turned on. But you not really can separate the music together with the clock. Um, this for this detail. Then a lot of people always ask, how much is my cuckoo clock worth? Or how can I figure out the price differences? What makes this clock more special than the other ones? So here it comes the part where I like to give you little tips and some hacks so you definitely know what clock to pick. Um, let's start, for example, right up here with the dancers. Yeah, here we have a balcony with the dancers. Those are very good-looking figurines, but they actually out uh, are made out of polyacryl, which is like, well, it's polyacryl, like a synthetic material. Down below here, we have very similar-looking figurines. They are made out of wood. Now, the wooden ones are hand-carved, hand-painted, and probably 25 times more expensive than the one above. 
So this is already a big difference, which also makes a couple euros difference in each clock. Then we have another version, which I show you down here. Those are the machine-made um, figurines, which are then later on hand-painted. Yeah, those are round, kept very simple. It's like a middle thing. So this is already a big indicator on price difference on the clock. Also, where you will see a lot of different clocks, especially when you buy online, you have to be careful um, because it's very difficult to see on a picture. In here, the numbers and the hands, yeah, so the wooden dials. This here, for example, is company Hoeneß. This is all the wood. So the, the hands are wood, the numbers is wood, the whole dials is wood, but you also get some clock, unfortunately most of them online, which are printed. Now, yeah, so it's flat, the numbers are just printed on, and then the hands are plastic. So this is also a thing which you don't see on a photo where you have to be very careful about. Another big difference is um, on the cuckoo clock, well, say mainly it all comes down to the detail. So the more detail you have in a cuckoo clock, the higher the pricing will get because the detail, that's the craftsmanship, that's the work, that's also the time effort which goes to in clock, also the love and the passion. And this of course has to be paid for. So the more detail, the higher the price. For example, um, let's see where we have one. Uh, right over here, we have some very simple carved flat trees. Nothing special, still look nice, but you, as you can see here, I can put my finger right behind it. They are completely flat. Um, yeah, here you see that, yeah, it's just flat, like a wooden piece. Then we have, say, one step up, the already kind of three-dimensional looking trees, which go then all around. Looks okay. And then we have the ones like this one here, which is also still wood, tree dynamically, but this looks very, very authentic. And um, a tree like this is, of course, very expensive. So for a tree, from a pricing like this, you almost can get a whole forest of the other ones. So this is also something you always should keep in mind. The another thing is um, where you also see differences is in the boards. Say, for example, here we have a clock. This has a very thin wooden board, yeah, which is still okay. It works. It's, it's all fine. But quality-wise, it's, of course, a big difference compared to one of those where you have a really thick piece of wood. Yeah, I mean, this is probably three or four times as thick as the other one. Um, the next part also would be, for example, the roofs. So here we have, say, a very simple roof with a little tiny bit of carving. Right next to it, we have a hand shingle roof. Hand shingle means that really somebody sits there with each shingle and glues them on separately. So this is also completely done by hand. It has a similar roof underneath than this one. Um, so this is, of course, a lot more effort to do. It's a lot more time. A lot more difficult to do also. Another thing uh, which is uh, also on the figurines. Do you have a figurine which is standing still or you have a figurine which moves? Yeah, A moving part on a clock also shoots up the price because you have to make that thing move as well. Yeah? So you have extra movements built inside, maybe with a wire or a string. So here, for example, we have the beer drinkers. It's not a... a, a figurine that doesn't move so the moving figurines of course also much more difficult to do it's more mechanism inside much more work to build it in and of course much more work to get it work as well um, a cuckoo clock itself like i mentioned at the beginning it almost lasts forever and it's very important that you make a right choice we here at uh, montax always say if you're not sure on what clock you like most of the time, it's even better to wait a little bit and go with the clock which you really like because you're going to be the person who's looking at it for the next 30 or 40 years. So make a good choice. You're always very welcome to contact us. We also can do uh, consulting over FaceTime or WhatsApp. You also can take a look at our website. Uh, I will put you all the links down below. If you like the video, 
I'm very happy when you ring the bell up here to stay informed when we have new videos. I hope that buying guide gave you some extra information and that you learned a lot. And hopefully we see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.